Hello and welcome to this video on how to run item response theory models in M+. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to multivariate statistical methods and psychometrics, including structural equation modeling, latent class analysis, and item response theory models. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources. In this video, I want to give you a basic introduction to how MPLUS handles item response theory models. And I want to walk you through the syntax for running an IRT analysis in MPLUS. I will address the output for item response theory models in MPLUS in a separate video. So here I'm just going to focus on the input file or syntax. And so in my example here, I'm dealing with a one parameter logistic IRT model, also known as a rush model. So this is a model where we assume that a set of items, for example, binary items are unidimensional, that they measure a common underlying trait variable, and that they have item characteristic curves where the slopes are all the same, meaning we have only one item parameter, namely a difficulty parameter. So the item location or the location of the item characteristic curves can be different, but the slope of the item characteristic curves will be the same under the rush model. And I will point out later how you can also specify a more general IRT model in um, M plus where you have more than one item parameter. So here in this example, I'm fitting the rush model or one parameter logistic model to four items of a spatial ability test called the cube comparison test. And so in my variable statement, I have all the variables in the data set here, cct.txt. So that's the list of all the variables in that data file. And now I'm picking from this list here, just four items that are named SCR1, through SCR4. Those are specific types of items from this test that require spatial cognition. And so therefore they're named SCR for spatial cognition required as opposed to other items for which um, pattern identification is sufficient to solve these items. They don't require mental rotation operations or spatial cognition. And so I'm going to focus on the ones that um, do require spatial cognition here for this example. So I'm only selecting those four items here. And so that's why they're listed under use variables. And then also of importance, these items have to be specified as categorical in M plus. What that does is it tells M plus that these items are not continuous variables. The default in M plus is that all the variables that are listed under names and or under use variables will be treated as continuous variables or metrical variables. And so then if that's not the case, if your variables aren't continuous, then you have to define them differently. In this case, we define them as categorical because these items are binary or dichotomous, we could say. And so then they will be treated like you would an ordered categorical variable. So if you had items with more than two categories, you would um, still list them as categorical if they were ordered categorical. So the categorical statement in M plus refers to ordered categorical or binary variables, meaning binary, dichotomous, ordinal variables. They will be listed under categorical. Now, if you didn't do this, then M plus would just simply treat your variables as continuous and it would fit a confirmatory factor model for continuous variables as opposed to an IRT model. So that's therefore very important not to forget about this categorical option here. Otherwise, you will get um, a model that is not an IRT model. Furthermore, it is very important in M plus to um, for an IRT analysis to specify a specific estimator. And so in this case, it's maximum likelihood that um, would be used for an IRT analysis. If you didn't specify 
the estimator as maximum likelihood, then M plus would default to an estimator that is called W LSMV. So it's a weighted least squares estimator. And then you have a probit link or a probit um, factor model as opposed to a logistic model or a logit model as we would in IRT. So you have to pick this estimator as something that has to do with maximum likelihood. Otherwise, um, you would, again, you would not end up with a classical IRT model that uses a logistic link function. So that is important. And then the categorical statement is important. And so those two statements together make M plus estimate this model as an IRT model as opposed to a an ordinal factor model or binary factor model or a continuous factor model for continuous variables. So this, those are two important steps here in specifying an IRT model in M plus. And then next is the model statement. The model statement is used to tell M plus specifically what kind of IRT model you want. And so M plus thinks generally in this factor analysis type framework. So it specifies um, or perceives, so to say, an IRT analysis also as a kind of factor analysis. And that makes sense because in an IRT model, we're also assuming oftentimes, or in many IRT models, we're assuming that the items are unidimensional, meaning we assume that the items measure a common factor or a common trait, so to say, a common latent trait variable that underlies the items. And that's exactly the way in which M plus thinks, so to say, or in which the M plus syntax is set up. It is the same thing basically for M plus as if you were specifying a confirmatory factor model. And so in the model statement, we say here latent variable by items. So this means the latent variable in this case called trait is measured by my four items, SCR1 through SCR4. And so the label trait here is one that I selected. So this is optional, the name that you pick, you could also just call it F for factor, or you could call it L for latent variable or something like that. And so I pick trait because we also sometimes refer to item response theory as latent trait theory. And this so say means we're measuring an underlying latent trait factor with our items. Here at the end, you can see that there is a uh, a statement that says at one. And so what this does is it sets the item uh, characteristic curve slope value, so to say, in the sense of factor analysis, we would say factor loadings. But so those are the slopes of the item characteristic curves or the parameters that correspond to the slopes of those ICCs all to one, which means that these items will not differ in the slopes of their item characteristic curves. All the item characteristic curves will be exactly parallel. They can only differ in terms of their location or in terms of the item difficulty. And so therefore, this statement um, is needed if you want to specify a rush or one parameter logistic model because that model is characterized by parallel item characteristic curves that only differ in difficulty but not in the slope of the ICCs. And so removing this at one statement or um, not specifying the at one statement here would then give you a two parameter logistic model or Birnbaum model as we say. So in that situation, those loadings, so to say, would be, or slopes, would be freely estimated as independent model parameters. And then the ICCs could differ between the items. They would no longer be parallel, or the slopes of the ICCs could differ, and not just their location. So this is the difference in the M plus specification between a rush or one parameter logistic model and a Birnbaum or two parameter logistic model is here with the at one statement. And so at one putting at one here um, makes this a one parameter logistic model leaving at one out makes this a two parameter logistic model. 
The output option here, Tech 10, was selected so that you can take a look at the model fit in a little bit more detail. So this provides residual statistics for the model that you can look at to figure out which response patterns are well or not so well reproduced by your model. And also you can look at bivariate model fit information using this Tech 10 output here. And then finally, I included the plot type plot three option, which allows us to get a plot of the item characteristic curves among other plots in M plus. And so this then um, allows us to take a look at these ICCs if we want to see, for example, how the items differ in their location, in their um, difficulty. So this is how M plus does it. This is how you can set up a an item response theory model in M plus. You can see it's very similar to what you would do in a factor analysis, if you're familiar with confirmatory factor analysis in M+, it's not much different. There are some subtle differences here that make this an IRT model as opposed to a confirmatory factor analysis model that I pointed out earlier. And it's very easy to specify such a model in the M+ software. In a separate video, I will discuss the output for an IRT model in M+, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for weekly tutorials and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my weekly newsletter and links to other uh, workshops and videos. And I'll see you next week.